Okay, um, I was asked to demonstrate how to um, find a connection in a client-side packet capture and associate that to a connection that's happening server-side um, or through the um, app connector. And so um, I'll show you a demonstration of that. I've got a, a app segment definition here for my domain controller, um, DC2, uh, which I'm going to use to map a network drive from the client and we'll take a packet capture in client connector and on the app connector and we'll we'll look at those um, the important thing if you're doing this in production of course is path selection you'll have multiple app connectors um, in your app connector group and you know the path might take um, several different uh, paths um, so you will need to take a packet capture potentially in multiple places um, or use policy to say for this user only use this specific app connector um, during this this uh, this packet capture. Now, of course, depending on what problem you're trying to, to troubleshoot, um, affecting the path selection might also introduce a, a change in the environment and uh, uh, not recreate the same problem. So, so just be aware of that. So here I've got um, a server group, and it says I've got an app connector group, and I've only got a single app connector in that group. So if I connect, if I do the capture on that um, that connector group, I will get what I want but um, just be aware of that in a production environment so we'll come across the diagnostics um, and we'll go to support information and I will add a session and we're going to call it uh, SMB because I'm going to capture the SMB uh, and we'll select our connector group which is Milton Keynes um, and we'll say we want to do a packet capture. And at this point, I could limit the, the target to just the, um, the domain controller, so I don't capture all the data. Um, but uh, we're not worried about it. I want to see all of the data anyway, because um, you might want to see DNS traffic as well and see what else is going on. We'll run it for 60 seconds, and I'm not going to um, specify an interface. We'll capture on all, all interfaces. Um, so before I click go on that, I'll come across the client. What I'll do on the client is um, I'll clear the logs and then I'll start the packet capture and I'll, I'll set up my command first, which is net use star dc 2welshgeekenet www root. Okay, that's the sharing of the map. Um, we'll come across here. We'll clear the logs. We'll start the packet capture. We'll click save on this, uh, which uh, starts the, the session. Um, and then we'll come over here and we'll map the network drive and then we'll go Z colon DIR and we'll copy you know, a file across wpad.dat the C colon that's done uh, and then we'll go C colon net use star delete and we've deleted the connection um, and then we can come here and we can stop the packet capture um, and at that point in time um, this will this will finish Wait for that to finish processing, that's uploaded into the cloud, um, and we'll be able to download that in a second. Um, so what we'll do, uh, uh, we will, um, first off we'll run a T-Shark, minus R, so we're reading the file, and we'll capture LWF, and what we're looking for is uh, TCP flags uh, 2, there's a sin, or TCP flags 0x2, that 12, sorry, which is a sin ACK, um, and we'll say TCP port 445, so the uh, SMB. And here we see the connection from the client to port uh, to a 164 address, a synthetic IP address, uh, and we see um, the port is uh, 59621. Uh, we see the SYN, we see the TCP window size, we see the window scale, um, and so we're able to calculate the, the available window size for the transferring of files, for example. Um, so now what we can do um, I've got a script, I will show you what that looks like, uh, mtunnel. And what this does is it takes that, that port 
and it searches through the log file and it'll output the mtunnel ID uh, effectively. So if we run uh, mtunnel search for that zsa tunnel star.log it gives us the mtunnel ID. So we'll copy that to the clipboard and we'll come across to our admin console. Let's just see if this is uh, completed. It has. So what we will do is we will download that uh, that file. Um, and we'll come back to that in a second. Um, so we go across to our diagnostics. Uh, and, and clearly I could search through um, all of this, but now I've got the mtunnel ID specific for this one. So I can come into here and I can say connection ID and we'll say that. We'll paste it in there and click apply. And now we have that one individual connection. It tells us um, the client was M. Ryan. Uh, it was a client connector. It doesn't obviously tell us the client source port, um, but it does now tell us the IP protocol and port for the app connector and the IP protocol and port for the client connector. So now I can uh, come back across here and I can go um, uh, T-Shark again. Uh, downloads, uh, what was that file called? They were called uh, admin probe TCP dump nice and easy to remember admin probe tcp dump uh, 248 and so now we can say um, we can say IP address TCP port we know it's this one it gives us the whole um, connection here so let's say we were interested again in uh, TCP dot flags 0x2 or TCP flags 0x12. So now we can compare the connection strings where we see the client side connection to the synthetic IP and the server side connection that we've got a um, Windows scale here of 128 uh, from the from the app connected to the server. The server says a window scale of 256. The window size back from the server is 8 uh, 8K times 256. Uh, the window scale here times 128 um, is different again to, to what's going on client side. Um, but you know now we've been able to. You know, we'd be able to look at it, all this data and see what's going on on that transfer as well. Uh, but the, the key point here is to take a packet capture client side, find a connection, TCP source port, search for that and get the tag ID uh, and output then the micro tunnel ID within the uh, uh, client connector logs. And then look that up in the um, ZPA admin console, get the server side connection information and then search for that in the uh, in the app connector logs. The other thing, just to be aware of here, um, that, that obviously this does tell us which app connector is being used. So if you had the capture across multiple app connectors, um, you could clearly identify which one specifically you want to be looking in the connection for. Um, so if you were uh, across multiple app connectors, I uh, hope it's useful. Uh, Mark at zscaler.com.